Good evening, everyone. I'm going to check my monitors to make er sure everything is working. So say hello if you're out there. And I think it's on. Hi, Eddie. Good evening. How are you? OK, so I am just double checking everything. And we'll just wait a few minutes and allow some to get on. Today is November 1st, 2022, and I am Paula McCoy, owner of Colors for Earth. On the screen here, we have a coupon that's available right now. If you're watching this at a later date, the coupon will not be good. But uh, be sure and check those out. It's also listed on my Facebook page. And you can take advantage of those sales, OK? All right. Hey, Debbie, good evening from Michigan. All right. My information's at the bottom of the screen, our website, phone number. Hey, Marlene. Hey, Sharon. Okay, so tonight I'm going to just do what I think will be a quick ha, -ha video. I'm going to do this a little bit different, so hopefully everything goes off without a hitch. Um, I'm going to show you how to create some texture with some of our products using frit okay so tonight we're talking glass so um, if you're a clay person you may or may not want to stay on uh, but i enjoy having you all here hey sharon all right hey marie so yeah tell me where you're from and uh, put a little note in the chat okay so today I have pre-recorded a couple of videos and I'm just going to play those. So this is something new for me. Let's hope that everything works. Okay. Hopefully. And uh, so the, the frit that's showing on the screen here. So um, what I've done is do a couple of different ways and I'm going to show you live also. Okay. So we've got quite a few on. So hold on and I will hide these. So don't forget to use that coupon code. Um, I'm not telling you when it goes off, but uh, if there's things that are on sale, you can use the Grateful 10 to get an additional 10% off. And if you're buying things that are not on sale, you have to create separate orders for these because I can't give you the same coupon per one order. So you have to use, so if you're buying single jars of color concentrates, um, then use the Thankful 20 and that's going to get you 20% off of your cart. There's a couple of third party items that it doesn't apply to. All right, so Marie's from New Jersey and we got Wyoming, Michigan. All right, so I'm by myself tonight. Uh, so bear with me if I miss your question, I'll have to go back, but hopefully I can watch everything and monitor. Okay. All right. So, all right. So what I'm going to do is go to my overhead screen and my camera all right so all right so make sure you can still make sure you can still hear me so what i did and i have a video that i've done all the steps to this sunflower that i am going to finish editing and put up on youtube but i wanted to kind of talk to you in person about the texture that's on can you see how that's raised so the texture that's on this this also has glitz on it if you're not familiar with glitz it is a pre-mixed liquid it's one of our metallics we have five colors um, so it's pre-mixed you just shake it i'm going to show you how i used it on some of this also okay hey jameson thanks for joining so what i thought i would do is I wanted to show you these because I was trying to come up with something to give me texture in the middle of the sunflower whenever I was uh, creating this and I just wanted more depth to it okay so I ended up going with this let me zoom in here okay so and I've got the video that'll tell you each one of these this particular one is I just took some slumpy's frit, okay, uh, combinations, and I put down the paste 
our low fire, no fire piping paste can act like a grout. In other words, just a very thin coat because you can see that you can see the frit through that, the different browns. Okay. Um, so I smeared on the paste and then I just pushed frit onto it. This one, I did a combination of things that I'm going to go through on the video. And then I've got clear frit here that I've colored with glitz, I've colored with enamel. And this is all colored enamel on that frit. So you can actually make your own colored frit to match whatever your design is if you're using the enamels. Okay. Hey, Lori from Pacifica. All right. So what I'm going to do, and hopefully this works, what I need you guys to do is to tell me whether or not you can hear the video when I start it. Okay. So let me cue up the first one here and we'll get started. All right, I'm going to show this and I'm going to Okay, what I'm going to do is show you um, how to create a texture. So I've been working on this sunflower project and for the center of the sunflower that's brown tones, I want to create texture and dimension. So I thought what I'd do is just uh, tape um, a little short video showing you. I'm gonna, one way is you can take the low fire, no fire piping paste. This is the black. I always date mine when I opened it. And then that way, if it's stiff, I know, um, you know, that it could be old. This is a little stiff. You can add a little couple of drops of the GM 300 glass medium to thin it. Once it's dry and hard, you cannot reconstitute it. I keep it scraped down. You can kind of see that in my jar so that I don't waste any of it. So, if I were wanting to create a texture for that center, say this is the center of my flower. So I'm just going to take some of the paste with the tool, and my tool is really old and falling apart. Um, you don't need a whole lot on here. Basically, you're making, you're, it's like a grout. Think of it that way, okay? All right, let me clean off my tool because it is a low fire and it will harden to that just as quick as I'll get out if you don't get it off of your brush and everything that you're working on. Okay, then I went in and I found some coarse amber. This is uh, some frit that slumpies sells. Here's a medium. This is an earth blend. So it has some of that same amber. It's also got, it looks like, um, two different, like a nutmeg type color and then a brown color, which are opaque. This one is coarse pale amber. And of course, anything transparent, the black is going to take over on that but we can experiment and try terracotta is what that um, one of those opaque you can see that there's some of that in there now you could always take and put a little bit of the terracotta down first kind of push it into the paste okay so you can use the paste by itself as a as a uh, grout okay and i'm going to grab a few chunks of that um, amber color i am using 96 coe glass and i just grabbed a scrap of glass uh, to do this on okay so that is there you can leave it at something like that you could come in with your blends you know on top you can also um, I'm gonna take some of the terracotta I don't need quite that much it's a small area 
I'm going to take some of that earth blend. Okay, and that's got a couple of different, it's got some transparent and some opaque. And I'm going to grab some of that amber so that I've got a coarser, different um, size spritz in it. Now, anytime you're wanting to create something with a little bit of dimension, you can use the layering mix that we carry. Layering mix is the keyword. You can layer things on top of each other when it dries. So I'm going to mix it. I've made some here, which is clear. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. So this is just clear frit. Okay. And I made this up, oh my gosh, probably over a year ago. So I've just mixed frit and the layering mix together. And then I'll show you how that works. So I'm going to add it to here. Uh, so I did shake this up a little bit just to make sure it's mixed. It tends to separate and just pour some in and then mix that up. If it's still really dry and not everything's coated, just add a little bit more. And then you could keep whatever you don't use um, in a container, just like I did. And we sell empty containers also on the website, coloursforearth.com. Okay, so you can see it's kind of milky. All right, so I can take this and add it on top of here. And we're going to pretend that my glass has been full fused and this is going to go back to um, really as hot as you want it to go. Contour fuse, attack fuse, and it will stay, once it hardens, it'll stay dimensional. Okay. Now I'm going to put the rest of this out by itself over here so you can see it without the paste underneath because that may be something that you want to do. But in order to get the dimension, once this hardens, it'll stay in its own shape and then you can fire it, like I said, as hot as you want it. So I will come back and show you what this looks like later after it's fired so i can pile this up however high i want it let me show you a little bit of a side view if you can without it falling off see how thick that is it's really really thick um, let me turn on the side camera and show you on that. Okay, so see it there? It's pretty thick. I mean, there's my fingernail next to it. And it's, I would say it's at least a quarter of an inch thick. This one's a little bit shorter. This one's taller. Okay. All right, so that's one way of doing a uh, texture. So you can use the paste as a grout, add it, and then I added some of that layering mixture on top. You can also just take clear for it, if that's all you've got. Um, you can actually mix it with one of your enamels. So we're going to make a couple of different combinations. This is coarse clear from Slumpies, so it's not quite as big as most coarse. Okay, and all right, so that kind of shows you how you can do that. So what I want to do is answer any questions. So I was starting to um, answer Jameson here. Um, so if you mix it, um, hold on, I'm trying to get my comment. <laughs> okay. So yes, Jameson, you can do a lot more with the layering mix. The key word is layering. 
So if you mix it just with an enamel, forget the frit, you can lay down a base coat, uh, flood it in. When that dries, it's hard as a brick. And then you can come on top of it with other colors like color concentrates or other enamels that you have mixed with the layering mix. So you can keep adding layer after layer after layer as long as you have it, the enamels mixed with the layering mix, you can continue to add. Now on the top layer, if you know you're done and you're not gonna add more layers, you can actually put just regular enamels mixed with the GM300 or you could do color concentrates if you just wanted to shade. So there's a lot of versatility um, what you can do with it. All right, so I'm reading, uh, Debbie has a comment. If you mound it up, does it stay that high? It, it depends on how hot you fire it, correct. Um, I'm gonna show you mine again with uh, the camera. Hold on one second. So let's get it. So this has been fired to 1380. Okay, let me get rid of myself here. Hide me. Okay, so this is 1380. And you, I think you can, maybe if I do it this way, it's easier. So see, and I did a 10 minute hold on it because I was testing what I wanted to do with my sunflower, okay? So depending on how hot you go, it also depends on what you're using. If you're using the enamel, 1380 is what we recommend. So Jameson says it's frozen. Hopefully it will um, correct itself. Sorry, guys. It looks like it could be my connection. Let's give it just a second and see if it pops back on. I've had internet trouble all day, and uh, so it doesn't surprise me, but I didn't want to disappoint you guys. So hopefully, come on. Okay, you said you still can hear me. So depending on how hot you fire it is how how it's going to melt, okay? So what I did was 1380 because I have enamels on some of it, which I'm gonna show you in another video. And that is what I needed. I see static screen and fired frit, but no movement. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what's going on. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, we may lose. Still fascinated by the topic. Well, thank you. I tell you, I've had internet issues for so long. It just, it's so frustrating. I'm ready to give up on this. Um, so just remember anytime I'm going to talk for a minute and hopefully it'll come back. Um, hopefully you can still hear me. Anytime you're adding color enamels to frit, the frit that I'm adding it to is clear. And when the clear melts, it's going to diffuse the color, meaning thin it out. And there could be areas that are, you know, softer or muted out because of the glass frit. Will you be able to see from the beginning? Yes, the YouTube is always... Uh, replayable. It always, you can go back to the beginning and watch it. Absolutely, Nancy. Okay, so I'm not sure if I refresh, if it's going to do anything different or not, guys. It looks like it's still stalled. I'm going to refresh. Let's hope I don't lose you, okay? So hang loose. Okay, it says we are still live. I lost all the original comments. Um, muting colors because of the clear frit. Yes, well, it is a cool effect, Jameson. Um, like I said, I'm rebooting. I think you guys are just seeing that now. So we're gonna give it a second. And I see that it's fuzzy, but at least I'm back. So, 
Let's hope that clears up. I hope it does. It still looks fun. I can see it on YouTube. I'm watching it myself. So. Okay. We'll give it just a second. I'm still showing not a good connection. Sorry about that, guys. Like I said, I'm just going to probably record things and put them up instead of trying to do lives until they get the internet really fixed in my area. This is crazy. And I don't want to start the other video until um, we can see if this is going to clear up. And it's not clearing up on my end. Fuzzy, but good sound. OK, so. As I was saying, yes, you can create different effects and you can kind of this one here and I would I'm hesitant to start the other video. The in the other video, what I did was I took just some clear frit. Um, I use I like Slumpy's clear frit because it the course is more like a medium. I'm a 96 COE. OK. As soon as this goes to green bars, I'll try to change it. Um, over to the video, but right now it's not showing. So I used it and I mixed up the enamels in a little cup, okay, which is in the next video. Fuzzy, but okay. And then I added the frit to it. So if you're going to build it up, you want to mix the enamel with the layering mix, okay? If it's something that you definitely are going to want it to stand up and create dimension. And that's what I would show you in the next video if I could. I Like I said, I hesitate to do it. So what you would do is you would full fuse your project, which is what I did on this. And I like I said, I have a video, multiple videos that I will edit and put up there with the complete technique. OK, and then I came back and I added my frit. And I did just clear frit. So what I've got here is some that I did a little bit ago. And this is just clear with the layering mix. OK, it's on there. It's done. I actually dried it with a little fan and like a heat tool. And then I was going to show you live how to paint over the top of it. And it doesn't look like my connection is going to be worth anything. Does anybody have any questions while we're kind of sitting here waiting to see if my internet's going to resolve itself? Which I'm not sure it will. Of course, after I announced I was going live, then I started having issues tonight, so I apologize. Okay, so let me see if I play the video since it is unlisted on YouTube, maybe I'll get lucky. And uh, let's try it. Okay, so this is a video showing you how to do um, enamels to color the frit. Okay. Okay, so you can also make um, a colored frit with your CFE enamels. So I'm going to put some clear frit in a couple of cups. Um, actually, I'll do three colors. Again, this is uh, Slumpy's clear coarse frit that I'm using. And then all you have to do is add your enamel. I've got 385 sienna here and I'm just gonna should have mixed up the enamel first let me backtrack here you could mix it into it but let's let's mix the color first and then add that into it okay so it takes a little more of the enamel than you think just because you're um, 
liquefying it and then basically you're going to put the clear uh, frit inside that and create a colored frit. So depending on how much enamel you mix up will determine how much frit you can add to that. Make sure you get that all mixed up and then add your you can see it's still pretty loose and runny I'm going to add about the same amount again you want it kind of dry So you can, um, I don't have any back here with me, but you could take and spread this out on parchment paper. You could just, um, to dry and then you can use it or you can just use it wet. So let's mix up some 86. This is 386 Burnt Sienna. Mixing it with the glass medium. Now, when you mix the enamels and you add the clear frit to it, you've got to remember that when it uh, fires, the frit is going to diffuse the color. Okay? Because the clear melts and it's going to push open the color. Like I said, you could take parchment paper, foil, um, wax paper, whoops, and you can uh, put this out on it and let it dry and use it dry. What you have to do is just keep turning it you can put a fan on it to dry it. Okay. So you could do this with any color. If you want to do the centers of, uh, you know, just a regular flower, you could put greens and yellows in the middle. This one here is 380 burnt umber, and I'm not going to make as much of it. Burnt umber. Which is a darker brown. You're just mixing to the same consistency that you've been doing your enamels. And then we're just going to add some of that clear. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, so if I were um, starting a center, okay, over here for the sunflower, I would start with my dark. Let me come in just a little bit closer. So you can create the shape. 
Um, you can also, we need to put some layering mix in this, which I forgot to do. So you could mix it with layering mix as opposed to the medium, and that's going to allow it to not become stiff and hard so that it will stay in shape. Add some of this around the bottom. You can always add color to this later um, as far as adding shading on top, that type of thing. And I'm showing you extremely large so that it's easier uh, to see. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of layering mix to these other two colors. And what that's going to do is just allow us to build these up so that they'll stay in the shape that we create. And then depending on how hot we fire. So you could randomly put some of this dark. And like I said, if you let it dry, then you could just add it. Just kind of take your fingers and crumble it onto the area. Mix that layer mix in it. And this will turn out like a black brown when it's fired. So you can kind of see it's built up quite a bit. Um, let me lift this up again and turn on the side camera and kind of see that up close. And over here on the side camera, you can see the mound of frit. Okay. This one, I, I, tried to dry these a little bit um, and what I'll do now is dry them and then come back and show you because even just on the clear one you can come back and drizzle your enamels on there and create the colors you want once that's hard okay it does need to be completely dry before you do that and uh, that's another way where you can uh, I've got some uh, glitz out here I've got some copper glitz that I'm going to add over the top and show you how to do some bling to it. Okay. All right. So we will dry these and I'll be back. Okay. So hopefully that made sense what I was doing. And then what I want to do is show you, um, cause I wasn't able to do the parchment paper but I'm going to show you that right now. Okay. So, okay. So, so I've got it. The piece so I've got here, it, that, I the piece here did, that I fired this to 13 and I fired this to 13 was a 10 80, minute hold. Okay. Was a 10 you can minute see hold. how textured. Okay. And you can see how that textured. Is. So that earlier is. I did just some, so clear earlier frit. I did okay. just some clear frit and let okay. me hide myself here. and let me hide myself. You don't need to see me. Okay, 
So I've got some clear frit and I just dried it. And Jameson was asking, does it, um, I'm trying to think of what I've got back here with the color to it. And I don't know that I have anything. Um, does it dry clear? So if you were looking at it on here, you can kind of see where it gives you a smeary look on the glass if it gets larger, okay, than where you wanted it and I pushed it back. That will go away, but you can also, um, I generally take some vinegar and just a Q-tip and I will clean that off just to make sure, or you can scratch it off just with your tool also. That will work too. Guess you need to order some layering mix and play, Jameson. Yeah, Jameson, you would be the one to play. So what I did while the video was playing was I mixed up some 386, the burnt sienna, which I showed in the video, and I mixed it with the layering mix, or no, excuse me, I did not. I mixed it with just the glass medium, okay? Because I wanted to show you the parchment. So if you put it out on parchment paper, and I lost my tool, and let it dry. And as it's, and I just kind of dried it, you can see that some of it's chalky, that part's dry, but you can spread it out and just move it around as it's drying. You can put a fan on it, and then you can take and use that in something else. And it would be a colored frit. Now, if you go to a full fuse, the clear, because it's made of clear frit, okay, it's just coated on the outside edge. That's going to diffuse, and you're going to get a lot of clear, okay? Not a lot, but can you see here where it starts to diffuse? And of course, this is 1380. Now, could you pre-fire it? Not really, because, I mean, you could spread it out on your firing paper and do it, but um, I don't think I would. That'd be a pain. I was just thinking out loud while I was talking. So, so on the clear one, I added the enamel off to one side, and you can see, I think, you can see how it's clear underneath. I think you can kind of, you can see the clear coming through. And then I added the glitz on the top. So what I thought I would do is show you, but you can, you can just make what you want. You can even put this in uh, some of the CPI molds. So I would put a coat of clear or another color down first so that you don't have this touching your mold. And then you can add this in. I've done that. I've done it with a green. Um, I used to carry a sample with me all the time. Uh, to show that. So the glitz is a pre-mixed. You need to shake it until it comes loose off the bottom. And usually you can tap it and you'll be able to see it or stir it. Either one. It's almost, I did not pre see how it's starting to move off the bottom. So this is still not mixed up. So this is a good lesson. So just keep shaking it until I'm thinking clear frit, layering mix, and glitz or micas, Jameson says. Yeah, absolutely. See how that's moving off the bottom of the jar now? So that just tells you there's just a little bit that isn't mixed up in there. So I'm going to go ahead and use it. I generally use out of my lid is my rule of thumb because I don't waste. I'm just using the, and my writing is off for this. This is just the class brush, the 455. Uh, two slash zero. So I'm just loading up that brush and then you can just drizzle over the top of it. Okay, so it coats it. I don't know that I would do this type of thing with the glitz because it's too pricey. Okay, just keep this mixed up if you're, if you're using out of the container. Okay, but you can drizzle any color over the top. Okay, so that is what I did on this side here. So that is the same thing. This, this one is fired. This one is not fired. But you can see the difference. So I went to 1380. So you just need to test it. You know, what you're doing is you're trying to, if you're not using the enamels, then you could use your normal, uh, firings that you like to do, you know, uh, for your texture, but that at least gives you some ideas on, um, hopefully that gives you some ideas on what you can do with this.
Okay. I'm hoping. I have fiber, Stephen said. Stephen mentioned that, um, it, and it's a good point because I did not say that. Um, you do need to vent your kiln when you're firing anything with layering mix, especially like the pores that I do and they're large, uh, definitely vent. Um, and that's why, Stephen, I go to 1100 because if I've got multiples in my big kiln, I usually vent longer. That way it gets it off of there. Had a big brick kiln bathtub size. So he said he had some stains in his kiln if you don't vent. I've never heard of that before. That's the first time. But, you know, there's a first time for everything. So um, hopefully this gives you some ideas and uh, things that you can do with this. Um, I look forward to seeing it. And I will get the Sunflower video edited. It's been uh, busy since the website is back up now. <laughs> and uh, so I've had a lot going on and just haven't got to that. So is there any last minute questions? Hopefully that gives you some things to think about. I can't wait to see what Jameson does because he is definitely out of the box. Um, you know me, I tell you, this is the way you can use it and you guys go do it another way, you know, which is great because sometimes I get stuck um, by the rules and there's a lot of people that don't play by the rules and it works. So, um, but you could do it with any size for it. I just happen to be using like medium and coarse. Like I said, these are slumpy. So they're a little bit different than your normal from the manufacturers because they make their own. So, so Debbie says, so you put that glitz on and fire it again. Yes. So you full fuse your piece, then you add your textured mound or whatever you're going to do that you want texture. You fire it. No, you can actually put the, put the glitz on there when the frit is dry, Debbie. So after it dries, just like I showed you, okay, just like I showed you, this was dry. I added the glitz and then you're going to the 1380. So that would be a second firing. If you wanted, you could do it separately, but you don't need to. As long as you're going hot enough to cure the enamel or whatever product you're putting on it, then you should be fine. Okay. Good question though. Anybody else got a question? I'm looking at the questions to make sure I haven't missed something. Uh, you could sift enamels over it. You could pre-mix. So when I mixed the enamels that I drizzled over the top, I mixed just regular GM 300 glass medium. You don't, you only need the layering mix to harden the shell of whatever shape you're trying to create. Okay. Um, that's basically what you're doing. Okay. So Debbie understands. Hopefully you guys do too. Okay, so full fuse and then add your texture. Let that completely dry. I fan dry it. I've heat gun dried them. You know, just keep it moving if you're using a heat gun and then put your color on it and go back to your 1380 with your 10 minute hold. Every kiln is different, so test it. That's kind of why I did a test. But if you want to use the paste, the paste can act as a grout. You could use the white paste if you want the colored frit to show more as far as if you're gonna use colored frit and not just color clear frit, okay? So hopefully that gives you some ideas and I look forward to seeing what you guys create, okay? If there's no other questions, I'm gonna sign off. I'm gonna to try to keep it uh, short and sweet tonight. Um, I'm glad the videos work, so I may do more of that. It sounds like maybe that's the way to go on some things. So, all right, you guys have a great evening and I will see you next week we will be talking ceramics again. Take care. Good night.